Um, so I'm going to share with you four lessons that we can learn from the life and times of Muhammad Ali, right? Which I think have stood the test of time. And if you just to kind of learn from these four lessons, could help you on the road to greatness. So let's dive in and think about round one, right? And it's this. How many people in the room as an organization have some values? Interesting, right? So you've heard that word before, okay. How many people have some values outside of work that they've written down? Very good, that they use every day to guide them. Ah, okay. So I know you kind of know about values, so sometimes you're going to hear stuff. Have you ever heard something you've heard before? Have you heard, ever heard something you've heard before? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but just the fact you've heard it doesn't mean that you're using it, does it? So again, my challenge to you is, is to be practical, to take these ideas and go do some little tests, you know? So values. So let me define it for you if we can. And I think the way to look at this, it's a two-sided mirror this today. It's like think about the organisation that you work for, if you work for one and how you might better use some of these ideas at work, but also outside of work. We need to be thinking of those two sides every time we think about these kind of four foundations for being the greatest, if you like, okay? So let me define for you, because people have different definitions. My working sort of definition for values, how we choose to behave. It's just dead simple, right? How we choose to behave. So why is Ali a great example of this? Well, again, you know, if you don't know the Ali story, so he fought Sonny Liston became heavyweight champion of the world, and overnight changed his name from Cassius Clay. This is him as a young Cassius Clay, <clears throat> sort of living up to the billing, right? Round about the time he fought Liston and that, I'm guessing. So young Cassius Clay fought uh, Liston, became heavyweight championship champion of the world at 22 years old youngest champion ever at the time, and changed his name overnight from Cassius Clay to Muhammad Ali. People were happy about that. He joined the Nation of Islam. They were happy about that either, because they were seen as a radical organization. Not quite as radical as maybe the Black Panthers, but a lot of people thought not that far removed. People, particularly white people, weren't too comfortable with that. And this guy had a bit of a mouth on him as well, didn't he? So he suddenly kind of became almost an official stroke, unofficial spokesperson for the Nation of Islam. And he said, the reason he said he changed his name was this, the, the reason he was called Clay was that was a slave name. And in fact, a white guy called Clay had owned his grandfather. And he said, I don't have to be who you want me to be, and I choose to change my name to Muhammad Ali. So that was a value statement, right? But a lot of people were happy about that. Have you ever introduced values at work and people are happy about it? Yeah, right, more of that later. And uh, then he had a few more fights, and then the Vietnam War started around about 1965. Well, that's when they started sending a lot of troops. And I don't know, I've spoken to some American friends, I don't know if it was a conspiracy or not, but I think somebody in government, I think, thought, we've got to shut him up. We've got to shut this guy up. He's making too much noise, you know? So let's draft him. Let's send him to fight in Vietnam. So they said he'd been drafted. In fact, they changed the rules because he originally failed the intelligence test to join the army. They said he had bright enough. Look at how bright do you need to be, right? You remind me that late, but hey, right? So they said, right, we're going to draft you and we're going to make you go fight in Vietnam. And he famously said, hey, the thing is, he ain't got no quarrel with the Viet Cong. And it's against, I'm a Muslim, it's against my religion to go and kill people. I'm not going. And they said, you don't understand. If you don't go, we will strip you of the heavyweight championship of the world. We will fine you $10,000, which is a lot of money in the 1960s, right? And we'll send you to prison for five years. And he said, I'm still not going. So the first point to think about values is you first have to know what they are, but you have to realize number one point, if there's only one thought you take from this particular round, this particular lesson, it's this, non-negotiable. Values are non-negotiable. 